Rabbi Shochet has said that every single debate that has ever been held between Jew and Christian has been won by Jews. Tonight that couldn't be possible because we're both Jews. But we put that aside. When uh, we agreed to do this debate, I was invited, Rabbi Shochet was invited. I considered him to be one of the top representatives of what is known as the anti-missionary position. Uh, we've been very careful to go through guidelines and even who would go first, last timing, and certain things decided by the flip of the coin, etc. Um, and one key thing to me was that everything had to be audio and videotaped. Why? Because at the outset I said to beware of sweeping, bombastic statements, whether by me or by Rabbi Shochet. <coughs> what I'd encourage you to do is, when these things are accessible, to go through very carefully look up texts, go through references. A key text Rabbi Shochet quoted, I want you to be able to check, was Matthew 23. He said Luke 23, but he meant Matthew 23. That's what he had in his notes. So if you want to look that up, I'm telling you where it is. Uh, and if I missed any rabbinic citations, you can check with him, and he can set that right also. Now, the whole idea that he gave all of these uh, qualifications, signs of the Messiah. And I said, nowhere did it say the Messiah would do it. And then at the end I said, when Jesus returns, he'll fulfill these. What was my point? My point was, who says those are the only messianic passages in the Bible? So what I did was I demonstrated through quoting various passages that are either totally self-evidently messianic by the terms and figures used being the same as elsewhere. For example, Semach branch is universally recognized as a messianic title. So I showed her that that was a priestly king. Or for example, Isaiah 53, which has an excellent background of rabbinic tradition interpreting it messianically. It was interpreted of the Lubavitcher Rebbe in his sickness as messianic. Uh, the point there is very simple. I showed text after text after text that is messianic in content, that is messianic as recognized by tradition, and said this had to happen also. To say that I showed nothing, demonstrated nothing, is basically like hitting a thousand and then saying you just struck out every time. Check, look, observe. Why did I quote Talmud? Well, I was told that authentic Judaism rejects this position outright. I was told that you could not believe in the New Testament and be faithful to historic Judaism. Therefore, it behooved me to demonstrate that rabbinic Judaism is not, in fact, the authentic or historic Judaism, but just another tradition of man. As to the idea that there is an unbroken chain of tradition going back to Moses, and without it you can't understand anything, let's be honest. Take a fundamental law of Torah that if people commit certain sins, they will be karet, cut off. The rabbinic tradition isn't sure between two options what it actually means. It's forgotten the meaning of certain animals, unclean animals, which they exactly are, how to identify them. Get a book like Arya Kaplan's Living Torah. Go through the notes and you'll see so many interpretations, so many ideas. Why? Because there is no unbroken tradition going back to Moses. In point of fact, only ultra-Orthodox Jewish scholars today will speak of that. Most modern Orthodox scholars will not even speak of an unbroken chain of tradition. You say, but I had my chain of tradition by which I interpreted texts. No, I went to the context. Read the context of the various passages quoted. Read the context of Matthew 23, where Jesus says, don't follow their example. Read the end of Matthew 21, when he says, yes, you sit in leadership now, but the authority will soon be taken away from you. No, Jesus did not say that we are forever to be under rabbinic law. There is a man named Rabbi Daniel Tzion. He was the chief rabbi of Bulgaria helped to save many Jews from the Holocaust, settled in Eretz Israel, the land of Israel, where he lived out the rest of his life there. He was a fervent believer in Jesus, Yeshua, the Messiah. In spite of all objections raised to him, I know others, religious Jews, who have put their faith in Jesus, the Messiah. I know some who have been beaten, some who have been persecuted. The persecution has gone both ways at times. The fact is very simple. If you will seek God, with all of your heart and all of your soul, because we have many prejudices. It's said in the Psalms, Gal abita niflaot mitoratecha. Open my eyes, uncover them, that I can behold wonders in your Torah, in your law, in your teaching. 
I'd encourage you, seek God and say, look, I'm a weak human vessel. I don't know everything. Give me wisdom. Give me insight as I study the text. And read on your own. Jewish believers in Jesus, I urge you to read through the scriptures carefully, to look at them, to look into the New Testament and see if, in fact, your faith stands on strong ground, as I determined to do over 20 years ago. I encourage rabbinic Jews and atheistic Jews and others, read through the Hebrew Bible, seek God, study, look, and see if, in fact, Jesus Yeshua is the prophesied Messiah. I rejoice to say that, in fact, the fastest growing religion is not Islam, but New Testament believing Christianity. The turn of this century, one out of every 13,000 Africans believed in Jesus. Now it's one out of three. God is moving, not with a sword, not with outward coercion, but by his spirit, through his word, changing lives. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who puts his trust in him. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Brown.